This will either work magnificently or it's going to fail miserably. What video creators or tools do you guys use to uh, boost or do research on your videos for what you want to create? I use vidIQ and TubeBuddy and GIMP for thumbnails, things like that. Comment below uh, and let me know what you guys use or if there's something better that I should be using. All right, let's update number three. It's been since February 2nd today. I'm filming this is March the 25th. I would have to say that the bits and pieces of things that I've been trying on my YouTube channel to increase minutes of view time, because that's what I'm focusing on right now, have been working. They haven't plateaued. They keep going up every day. Following the advice of, you know, Daryl Eves, Roberto Blake, Tim Schmoyer, can't remember the name of the other channel that I've been following and, and reading up on. And also listening to the video creator podcasts have helped out tremendously. I'm still shooting off of my iPhone 7 Plus right now. Um, you can't really see it, but I have the I have an OtterBox case on my it's the Defender series on my iPhone. So I've got it clipped to the sun visor in my wife's car. The big thing I've been doing, um, and I think it was Roberto Blake that I heard say it, or at least heard say it last, it has to do with tags on videos. You're only allowed 500 tags, so a lot of people will use those tags for either single word keywords or um, misspellings. So if there's a common misspelling, they'll use that. He uses mostly multiple letter keyword or tags in his videos. I use vidIQ and TubeBuddy right now, the free versions, but I've got a 14-day demo or trial of TubeBuddy that I've been playing around with. Its keyword explorer is pretty sweet. I haven't tried the vidIQ one out yet very intently, but it has really helped me kind of revise some of my tags. The tags and the description, um, thumbnail, I've been trying to do those on my video fairly well. Of course, I upload my videos private, which, you know, if you upload the video private, get all your stuff set up and then make it public. As soon as you make it public or unlisted, that's when the timer starts for YouTube's algorithm. It seems like the algorithm is really kind of there to help you get your video out there and seen within the first 48 hours. It kind of looks at it judges the velocity of your video um, and will start preferring it. You know, there's that 48 hour window where it's really like new and, you know, they, they want that new content out there. Uh, so that's what it seems like to me. Sometimes it'll take a day or two before the views really start kicking up on, on the videos that I've uploaded. But already I'm kind of watching this one video that seems to be in the lead and it is according to the estimations um, on AdSense and the Google Analytics and stuff, it's the, uh, it's the video I have right now that's the major contributor to my channel's growth. So I am going to hopefully be shooting a couple videos this weekend, other than this one, and staging them for upload one mid to end of the week, maybe, and then another one mid to the end of next week so I can kind of watch and see if what I did in that other video uh, will hold true for these. And I'm not trying to get my channel into a specific niche, but hey, if these videos work and people and they're helpful and people want to uh, watch them, I'm all for it. I enjoy making them. Uh, it gives me an excuse to buy stuff and, and make videos about it. Plus, I've got a garage full of stuff that I can make similar videos about. What I am really hoping to do is uh, get some momentum behind my channel, enough that I can justify paying for the subscription to get TubeBuddy instead of using the free version and vidIQ. Right now, for the lowest levels, I would still put me at about 23 bucks a month. And it's not that I couldn't do it out of pocket, but I really want the channel to pay for itself. There's some things I can justify doing sound, you know, better sound, better lighting. Right now, shooting outside, well, in the car, anyway, it's a 
eh, somewhat acoustically friendly environment. And the lighting's not too bad. It's kind of overcast, but it's bright outside. So that's not hideous, but uh, I'd really like to have um, some dedicated lighting, uh, better camera, and uh, not that the camera on this is bad by any means, but I'm not using anything manual right now. It's just all the automated settings. I touched the camera to, you know, put the focus where I wanted it to be, um, and that's where it does its auto exposure and all that stuff. So. As long as it's not too crazy, it's it turns out all right. But I would like to have some um, lighting so I have total control over that and uh, at least a microphone for shooting indoors. I'm hoping the audio on this will turn out okay. I think the microphone on this is on that end of the phone. So we'll see how it turns out. I can boost it a little bit when I'm editing. And uh, I guess that would be the next step, too. So I've, I've got the iPhone I shoot with. I'd like to get the lighting. I'll probably get lighting first. And then audio. So a decent mic. Not crazy. You know, probably just one of the ones that plugs into the 3 8 cent jack on here and, and gives me a little bit more directional control over the sound. Be able to drown out or eliminate some of the sound coming from the sides. My house is crazy loud. And anybody in another room could very quickly bleed over my video. And not that I don't enjoy shooting video, I just don't like reshooting video. Hear that horn? Been uh, pleasantly surprised. Actually, shocked almost. Like, wow, I can't believe this. I'm really trying to shoot evergreen content, which is something that people will continually go back to it or find it useful, beneficial. And it's not going to be something that peaks out for a while and then just drops off to a, an afterthought because whatever situation it was shot for goes into the past. I don't know if I'll ever be at a point where I'm shooting about current events or things that are super duper time sensitive. Maybe, maybe not. I've also got a Patreon page that I've started up. I'm not really sure how to optimize that yet. It's there. Any of the... I've only got one goal to find over there. Any of the patrons that decide to follow me and, and support the channel over there, that will go toward equipment for the channel. I've been working on my social media accounts, um, Instagram and Snapchat mostly, trying to get a stream of referrals. Snapchat seems to be dying. Um, not a lot of people really on Snapchat or activity on Snapchat, but I'm seeing a ton of new followers on, well, a ton. I'm seeing a, a decent stream of new followers on Instagram. Some of the ones that follow you for a day or two and get you to follow them, then they unfollow you. But I'm using a utility on that so I can watch my subscribes and unsubscribes. Um, there's there's a handful of people I follow that don't follow me back that, you know, like the Harley Davidson businesses, things like that. But um, for the most part, if you're an individual and you don't follow me, I don't follow you back. Uh, unless you're like a big personality. Um, I mean, obviously I follow Tim Schmoyer, Schmoyer Roberto Blake, um, Sean Connell, those guys, they don't follow me back, obviously. But they've got valuable content. I like to see their Snapchats, uh, or not Snapchats, I'm sorry, uh, Instagram stories. So uh, I follow them because it's valuable to me. And I don't do a lot on Snapchat, honestly, or Snapchat. Why do I keep saying that? Uh, Instagram. I don't do a lot on Instagram that I consider to be beneficial to most people, unless you like seeing me post selfies of myself and my beard. Um, pictures of food, cats, little video clips, things like that. Uh, like I said, very surprised at the velocity that this one video has given my channel. It's just hitting around the 28 day mark, which is the default window where the stats kind of show. I think all of the other videos on my channel, most of the other videos on my channel uh, have been up there over 28 days. So I kind of want to see a rolling window of what this video is going to do over the next three months or so. But like I said, I do have a couple other videos I'm going to try and shoot this weekend and get all up and ready. I've already got the uh, title, description, and tags 
written for the first one that I'm hoping to shoot tomorrow. So I'll be able to get that one up primed and tuned and uh, ready for publishing. I don't know if I understand it completely, but uh, it's making money. So if I play with it, the worst that's going to happen is it's going to make less or make it slower. But we're I'm approaching 200 videos. Um, Roberto Blake's always like, no, oh, people post a few videos and stop. Do a thousand. You know, do a thousand videos. So if I can get a good workflow down, I may start trying to do um, a video a day, Monday through Friday. So who knows? Who knows? If you're worried about your channel or think that maybe your channel could be revived or um, you're curious as to whether or not you should put time and effort into it, I would say do it. There's people out there that are giving away plenty of info on how to get your videos viewed and, and uh, increase the view time on your channel. And, and if you want to make YouTube your full-time job, there's plenty of information out there on how to do that. I've not bought, still haven't bought, uh, that 30 Days to a Better YouTube channel from Tim Schmoyer yet. Do I buy that book or do I invest that money, even though that's a one-time thing, 30 bucks or whatever it is right now, into TubeBuddy or vidIQ? I know that TubeBuddy and vidIQ have been extremely helpful in researching keywords uh, for video tags and things like that. I guess maybe I should look at a microphone. Just do it. Start doing the work. Uh, following the people, watch their live streams, their YouTube live sessions, things like that. It doesn't take long to see some results. I started initially by uh, tuning the tags, description, thumbnails, and titles of some of my older videos and saw some traction there. It's like, oh, interesting. Through my normal course of events of looking for a tool, I did research on YouTube, found the tool and videos that people had done. It's like, wow, that guy got a decent amount of views. His channel's about my size. I think I'm going to I'm just, why not? I'll shoot a box opening and, and demo, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't take much, and I don't think it's an anomaly. I really don't think that one video is an anomaly. So do it. Go through your old videos, check them out. Go get the uh, vidIQ and uh, TubeBuddy Chrome extensions. Learn how to use them. Go watch video creators uh, on YouTube, Roberto Blake, and uh, just start playing around with it. Watch your analytics. Monetize your channel as soon as you can. Set up a Patreon account. Get the things out there and in place so that uh, you can start playing with them and experimenting. Ultimately, just remember that no matter where you go or what you do, you need to embrace the grace and don't shun the sun. See you later.